Hitty CC, and welcome to another edition of Morning Coffee. When I um, was in high school, um, I played football, and so we would have these two days. And every August, you know, if you if you were smart, you got in shape before then. You were actually working out and running and getting in shape. Otherwise, two days were going to kind of practically kill you, right? You have to get up super early in the morning, and you'd go to the first practice, and that lasts for two hours. Then you had kind of the afternoon to grab lunch and then you come back about two thirty, three o'clock and then we'd have an evening practice and during two days you're constantly doing these wind sprints and you are you're out there running laps and wind sprints and we had all kinds of things called suicides and burpees and all kinds of stuff that we had to do um, to stay in shape and and our conditioning coaches um, really put us to task right and and the whole concept was that if you could put in the effort and get in great shape, then you weren't going to get get gassed in the fourth quarter, right? And when we get tired and we get exhausted, it makes um, weaklings out of all of us. It makes us very timid, right? When you're sucking air and sucking wind and you don't have anything, you no matter how much you want to tackle somebody, no matter how bad you want to gain yardage and stuff like that, you just don't have the energy or the ability and you, 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 you kind of lose the battle, right? And usually the victories go to the group that's most prepared, most conditioned, and, and puts forth the hardest effort, the greatest heart. And so one of the things that I always saw um, as an athlete in high school were guys that would walk out in the field and then we'd, you know, we, the coach kind of put us on the honor system when we first went out. You're supposed to run like six laps around the field and then get ready to get in formation. So we do jumping jacks and push-ups and all kinds of stuff, right? But those six laps were kind of the honor system. And so I'd watch all these guys run in front of me and they'd kind of cut all the corners and um, cheat and then they'd look and then some of them would cut out at only four laps instead of running the full six and everything. And we used to have this, um, this coach and um, and it was Coach Llewellyn, and Coach Llewellyn would look at us and he'd say, you know, you're only cheating yourself. You're only cheating yourself. And um, I, that kind of became something that was like words to live by. Um, because to me, I wanted to be the guy in the fourth quarter that wasn't gassed, that had full energy, that could put everything into every single play. And 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 yet I saw guys cheat themselves, and I saw how that affected them in the regular season. So to me, like I had a tremendous respect for people who were all in, right? They were sold out. And I couldn't stand to be on a team with somebody who was going to cut corners, who wasn't going to work hard, but who wanted some type of accolade. You know, we had guys who didn't want to put the work in, but then when it came to game time, like, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. You got to pass to me. I was open and all this stuff. And and, you know, when push came to shove and, we, and the chips were down and we were down by 14 points, there were those guys who didn't have any energy or juice left. And so they were the ones who cost us the game sometimes. And so I think one of the things that, that, that we can apply to our life is, you know, it, was that guy a football player? I'm sure that he goes around and says that he's a football player. Yeah, I played football in high school. I played football. Um, but was he really a football player? No, because to me, a definition of football player is somebody who's all in, who's sold out, who's going to fight, who's never going to give up, right? Um, one of my heroes, um, um, this is a throw out to Mark Hubert and, and Jeff Mason, but one of my heroes is uh, Jim McMahon, a quarterback from the Chicago Bears. Before he played for the Chicago Bears, um, he played for BYU, Brigham Young University. And there's a game, and if you go on, on uh, Wikipedia, um, you'll find, I think there's even some clips of it in in YouTube, but he gets taken out of this this um, he gets taken out of this game, and he's on the sidelines, and the team starts to rack up all these points. But we get into I think it's like the end of the third quarter, and they're down by a tremendous amount, and um, the coach wants to put him back in, and McMahon looks at the coach and says, "I'm only gonna put, put you know I'm only gonna go back in if you believe that we can win," and so then he Jim goes out there and proceeds to rack up some of the, 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 the most yardage um, that's ever been put up in BYU history and completely overcome something like a 28-point deficit and wins the game. And later on, if you remember, he played for the Chicago Bears and it was in 85, 
um, that he got banged up, and they had to put Steve Fuller in. It was a Super Bowl year, and they were playing against the Minnesota Vikings, and the Minnesota Vikings did the same thing. They got this huge lead, and even though Jim McMahon was banged up and Ditka didn't want to put him in, um, McMahon just basically willed his way onto the field. He's like, I'm going back in, and I'm going to play. And so he goes in, and he mounts this comeback, and he, you know, I think the first play from the line of scrimmage is a touchdown pass to Willie Galt. And then there's another one, and then there's another one, and all of a sudden there's scores coming left and right, and he fights back. And I was in Minnesota at the time, so I'm sitting around all these Viking fans who have been giving it to me for three quarters and making fun of me and mocking me, and then McMahon puts on the show, and he beats the Vikings, and they pres preserve their undefeated record um, that, that, to that point. And so one of the things that, that, that stands out to me when we hear stories like that is this idea of I don't quit, I'm totally sold out, I'm going to put forth every effort there was, right? And I think my heroes, you know, Jim McMahon, Walter Payton, who was putting, you know, running hills and doing all kinds of things to keep his body in top condition, and those are the guys that we look up to um, as athletes and we're like, man, they just, they never stopped putting in practice. They never gave up. They put in the work. They put in the effort and they were sold out and they did everything in the field that they could do to possibly win. That's who I call football players. That's who I call athletes. Not just some guy who puts on a jersey and half asses his way around the field and then, you know, somehow because there's no one else on the team that plays that position, he gets to, to go out in the field and stand at a tight end position or a tackle position because he's over 200 pounds or something. That's irrelevant to me. What I, I'd rather see a guy who's 160, 170 um, sold out at playing offensive tackle and giving all his heart, even though he's getting dominated by a bigger player, than I do to want to see some guy over 200 pounds who doesn't want to put forth an effort and doesn't want to put in any effort in practice, right? I think it's the same thing true in our, our spiritual lives. There's a question we've got to ask ourselves. Do you just want to be called a Christian because you go to church? You know, because it's a heritage that you were given, because, you know, you like the community of people or you like your small group or, you know, it's just something that you do. You know, Discovery is this really kind of cool place to hang out. So I'm just a Christian. I'm just this Christ follower and I kind of check my list. I show up, you know, once a weekend or maybe a couple Sundays a month or something like that. But to me, is that really is that really deserving of bearing, uh, you know, kind of bearing Christ's name? Are you really a Jesus follower, or or do you need to be sold out? Do I need to see commitment? And so those are the things that we need to challenge ourselves with going into this new year. I would love to challenge you to say, what is it going to take where you don't allow anything to interfere? with life change in your life, with your dedication, with pushing through, living on mission, making a difference in people's lives, loving people, redefining what it means to be a Christian. You know, our communities and our family, our neighbors, our friends, all are going to see the church to some degree this year. They're going to see it in you. They're going to see it in me. They're going to see it in all the people that attend DCC in some way, shape, or fashion, right? Are you going to be the person who goes out there as a Christian and wants to redefine what it means to be Christian? You're not going to stay static. You're going to try to rescue people, help people. Um, you know, the blessings that Jesus brought into your life, you're going to try to extend those blessings to other people. And you're going to get it put forth an effort and strive and push. Or are you just going to, you know, chalk it in and cut you know, cut off half the field and cut the corners and jog your way through the sprints and, you know, allow yourself to get gassed and allow yourself to, to let life take over and the busyness of life and all that stuff. And you're just not really going to put forth an effort again. That's the decision that's put before you this year, right? Going into this new year is a challenge. And that is, how much effort are you going to put in? What kind of work are you going to put in? Be, Jesus being somebody worthy for you to follow, Jesus being Savior, cost him everything. It cost him his life. How much is being a Christian costing you? Think about that. All right. Have a good day.